controversial, and Curtis broke her silence over Algab's success. After Vice Ganda gave his comment on the unstoppable fame of the love team of L-Dub which is undeniably made Eid Bulaga gone over the top ratings on noontime show entertainments, and Curtis also broke her silence regarding on the same issue. And Curtis claims that the newest love team called L-Dub is great. She thinks that their chemistry is indeed great. The Showtime host even said that the competition between artists and networks could not be avoided. That's why the only thing that she's asking for the viewers is to lessen the bashing. I mean, of course, there is a war now between the fans and everything. But I think everyone just needs to take a chill pill. The rivalry between these two big noontime shows at Showtime and Eid Bulaga became even more tighter after main EIA Dub Mendoza came and changed the phasing. Invite you to watch the video. Colanco and 10 other convicts affidavit. Dilema gets $3 million every month from drug money in Bilibid. Former Justice Secretary Leela Dilema, the neophyte senator, collected millions of pesos from high-profile inmates in New Bilibid Prison, NBP, in Moneylupa City while she was still head of the said department during the Aquino administration. This was from the sworn affidavits obtained by the Philippine Star that the ten high-profile inmates submitted to the Department of Justice, including Herbert Impang Colanco. Kolanko also revealed a group of gangs of inmates from the Visayas and Mindanao called the Carcel Side which he leads, had given the Lima 3 million pesos each month. According to Kolanko, the money that goes to the Lima is for her approval of their privileges and for allowing their businesses, such as selling beer, inside the Bilibid. They earn another 3 million pesos from 300 boxes, 10 times more than the original price. He added in a sworn statement signed last September 1st. J.B. Sebastian was the leader of the counterpart of Carcel Side, called Presidio Side. The group consists of over 5,000 inmates. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre II has con. RMED that Colanco, fellow drug convict Noel Martinez and the ten other inmates would testify before the House of Representatives inquiry on the proliferation of illegal drugs in the NBP. Invite you to watch the video. Release Norwegian hostage thanks Dudert for rescuing him from the Abu Sayyaf. Jartan Sekingstad, a Norwegian hostage by the Abu Sayyaf was set free, Saturday, September 17, around 2 p.m. in Padical Sulu. The hostage even thanked PH President Rodrigo Dudert for saving him from being the Abu Sayyaf's captive. Presidential Peace Advisor Jesus Dereza and Presidential Communications of the Philippines said in their official statement, the first words that Kjartan uttered on the phone was, Thank you President Dudert. MNL Chairman Nermis Wary and Barangay Kagi took the plunge on letting Sekingstad stay at his place just until the bad weather fades out. However, John Ritzel and Robert Hall, formed captives of the terrorist group months ago, invite you to watch the video. Netizen pointed out 15 times that the star witness of the Lima was caught lying during the hearing, on a Senate hearing conducted last Thursday, September 15, a man named Edgar Matabato, 57, stood before the court as a witness of the extrajudicial killings in Davao City under the leadership of Davao's former mayor Rodrigo Duterte. Matabato claimed that he is a member of the infamous vigilante group, the Davao Death Squad and accused President Duterte of hiring him to assassinate 1,000 individuals when he was still a mayor. Furthermore, Matabato also narrated in front of the Senate how he was asked by Duterte to be a member of the Lombardo Boys which is the precursor of the notorious Davao Death Squad. However, the statements of Matabato did not go on smoothly as a netizen claimed and proved that he was just lying and his claims towards Duterte are mere allegations without basis. A netizen invalidated Matabato's statements 15 times and here are the rebuttals to prove that the witness is lying. 1. Kong. Carlo Nagrails made a public statement using his Facebook account saying that he does not have any bodyguards or personnel who is killed because of politics. I don't know what this guy is talking about. From the time I was chief of staff to the time I was elected as congressman. No supporter of ours or persons under our employ was ever killed due to politics. Political differences in our city has always been strictly on the level of difference in policy and style. It has never degraded into the level of physical or violent. 
That is why it is easy for us to set aside our differences and unite for the common good of Devo and the nation. I can only suspect that this guy is being manipulated by some people to only serve their own selfish interests. Copied from Kong. Carlo Alexei Binagrel's Facebook account. 2. Paolo Duterte did not study in Ateneo de Davao but in Philippine Women's College, PWC, in Davao. 3. A former schoolmate of Paolo Duterte confirmed that Matabato never became Paolo's bodyguard and in fact, Paolo Duterte never had a bodyguard when he was in grade school. Insert screenshot of DEJ's comment. 4. The Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Task Force, PAOCTF, was abolished in 2001 and not in 2002 which means that no meeting was conducted like Matabato is claiming. 5. Richard King was not killed in Maclo but in Vital Sea Office. 6. Philippine Army confirmed that Matabato was not on the Citizen Armed Force Geographical, CAFGU, list. Insert screenshot of any WS5 Everywhere headline or the Manila Times headline. 7. Matabato claimed that he survived 30 bullets and managed to keep himself alive. 8. Matabato claimed that Paolo Duterte is a drug user based on his looks and people's rumors. 9. Matabato claimed that he is a ghost employee of Davao City Hall and monthly receives 3,000.00 Philippine pesos but then later changed the amount to 5,000.00 Philippine pesos. 10. He also claimed that he had killed 50 people but later on claimed that he had assassinated 1,000 or 11. Matabato claimed that in 2003, Delimo had a police operation to dig alleged graves and she was supposed to be ambushed and assassinated. Delimo herself corrected it and said the operation was in 2009. 12. Matabato claimed that aside from being a ghost employee in the Davao City Hall, he also was working at the police arm office of the city mayor and was receiving monthly wage. However, the two offices denied the ghost employee practices in their office. 13. Matabato's statements on who brought him to be the case's witness is confusing as he cannot identify exactly who it is. 14. Matabato claimed that he has no access in any form of communication or media such as cell phone, telephone, TV, newspapers or radio but later on claimed that Richard King's wife had called him. Also, a friend of him called him to be the witness when he was hiding in Pangasinan. If this is so, how could his friend be able to make contact with him? 15. Matabato claimed that he killed Solly Macdam, a terrorist. However, no documents can be found to prove that such Solly Macdam really existed. These rebuttals and invalidations only prove that Edgar Matabato has a very questionable background and so his statements should undergo further investigations. Invite you to watch the video. Trump says open borders cost lives and this will end if elected. Donald Trump, who has made a hard-line stance on immigration a centerpiece of his presidential campaign, asserted on Saturday that not one more American life should be given up in the name of open borders. All across this country, dining room tables have an empty seat because the government abandoned its duty and has not enforced its basic laws, the U.S. Republican presidential nominee told the gathering of the Remembrance Project a group founded to remember those killed by people living illegally in the U.S. and to press for tougher laws. This has to end. This will end if I become president. Two dozen members of the organization sat behind Trump as he spoke, and several told their stories, often gruesome, of how their loved ones lost their lives. Trump has appeared with members of the group several times, including during the speech to lay out his immigration policy in Arizona last month. He vowed to continue to shine the national spotlight on their work. Politicians ignore your cries, but I never will, Trump said. Maria Espinoza, founder of the group and daughter of a Mexican immigrant, praised Trump's advocacy. But the Houston-based group has come under scrutiny for some of its pronouncements, including Espinoza's false assertion that immigrants who are in the U.S. illegally kill 25 Americans a day. Trump has long talked tough on immigration deriding Mexico as the source of rapists and criminals in his campaign kick-off speech last year and vowing to build an impenetrable wall on the nation's southern border.
he is not proposing a pathway to legal status for people living in the country illegally but has backed away from his call for the mass deportation of millions of people who have not committed crimes beyond their immigration offenses. But he also ruled out what he dismissed as amnesty, saying those who want to live legally in the U.S. will need to leave and head to the back of the line in their home countries. Later Saturday. Trump hit back at the former defense secretary who called the Republican nominee beyond repair when it comes to national security. Robert Gates, who served under presidents of both parties, wrote in the Wall Street Journal Saturday that Trump is stubbornly uninformed about the world. Trump, at a rally in Colorado Springs, Colorado, called Gates an absolute clown, insinuated that probably has a problem we don't know about and then claimed that he would be so much better at what he's doing than the former cabinet member. But Trump made no mention Saturday of either controversy that dominated the political world a day earlier, he did not address his decision to finally acknowledge that President Barack Obama was born in the United States or his call for Hillary Clinton's Secret Service agents to drop their guns and then let's see what happens. Trump's running mate, Indiana Governor Mike Pence, released a two-page letter from his doctor Saturday vouching for his excellent health, summarizing his medical history and results of a July physical exam. Pence, 57, released the letter after Trump, Democrat Hillary Clinton and her running mate, Tim Kaine, also provided some details of their medical history. The health of the candidates has become an issue since Clinton stumbled at a 9-11 memorial event and revealed afterward that she had been diagnosed with pneumonia. Pence's doctor disclosed that Pence had basal cell carcinomas, skin cancer, removed from his face in 2002 and 2010. He also had surgery in August 2015 to repair a hernia. The doctor said the only medication Pence takes is Claritin for seasonal allergies, he does not smoke or drink alcohol, has diet-controlled heartburn and exercises four times a week. Pence campaigned Saturday in the Villages, a sprawling retirement community northwest of Orlando, before tailgating with Florida Gators fans before their game against North Texas. Thank you for watching videos like you remember the channel register and comment below. Thank you.